This is Math 142. We're looking at Section 8.3. We're going to look at polar coordinates. So polar coordinates are just a way to talk about like a position in space. And we're really familiar with uh, rectangular coordinates, what's called, or Cartesian coordinates. Like if I talk about the point 3, 3 in rectangular, what we're going to call rectangular, Notice what we're, we're talking about, like we're centered at the origin, 0, 0, and then we're saying go over 3 and up 3. So these are called rectangular coordinates because you, you travel in a rectangle, right? Like you go over and up, and if you go back and down, it makes a rectangle. So this is a rectangular coordinate. Polar coordinates are a little different. Um, we can talk about the same space, uh, the same location in polar coordinates. But what polar coordinates do is they have um, a distance for us, like a radius, and then they have um, an angle in here that we'll call theta. So similarly, we could talk about this distance is 3, and this is, or that distance is not 3. Um, that distance is some number, which we'll call r, and that rotation is theta. So you can think about it as like you're standing here, you're facing this, it has some certain length, and then it gets rotated so out some amount. So I could talk about, for example, the point 4 um, pi, over, pi over 4, say. So what that would look like, look on here, is this is polar graphing paper. So notice we have zero degrees. We have these in degrees, right? These are also in radians. And then we have these distances. This distance is one. So all these distances are, are one away from the center. And then these distances are two. And of course they make a circle, right? Three, four. So if I wanted to graph that point, like I said, uh, four pi over four, there's two things going on here. It's giving me a radius and it's giving me a rotation. So the radius, is four, so it's out one, two, three, four to this four circle, but then it's rotated up pi over four, and it would be this point right here, and I just grab it. So it just shows me like a location in space. And if instead of uh, four, pi over four, it was five, that point would be out here, right? If it was three, it would be here, but it's the same rotation. Or if I did the point four, say pi over two, the distance is still 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, but now it's been rotated up to pi over 2. So hopefully you can visualize where, where some of these things uh, would be. So the point 2, pi over 3. So pi over 3 is here, it's this rotation, but then it's only out 2, so it would be right here. Be that point right there. Now this idea... Uh, actually extends, we, these could be negative, these could be bigger numbers as well. So for example, there's two points, different points in polar. So negative 3, pi over 6. So if I think about this, I'm going to go out to this pi over 6 rotation, so it'll be along this line. And if it was positive 3, right, it would be 1, 2, 3, it would be here. But it's negative 3, so you're facing this way, but you're going to go in a negative direction. So you would go back 1, 2, 3. So this is that point right there. And if I think about this, this point, 3, negative pi over 6, a negative pi over 6 rotation is down to here. It's this rotation right here. So it's facing this way, and then it's a positive 3, so 1, 2, 3. So that spot is right here. And what I think is really interesting about polar, one of the things that's really interesting, is points aren't labeled uniquely. For example, if I go back to rectangular 3, 3, if I get rid of all this, this red that's on here, this nonsense, boop, over 3, up 3, there's only way, way, one way to get there. Over 3, up 3. I mean, you could go up 3, then over 3, but we still write it as that point, 3, 3, the x value, the y value. But in polar, there's a bunch of ways to get there. Let's just talk about, for example, just to make it easy, this, this point that would be right, right here. So one way to talk about that point is, let's see, that distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
and the rotation is pi. So I could say the radius is 7 and the rotation is pi. I could also say the rotation is 7, I'm sorry, the, the, the radius is 7 and the rotation is negative pi, right? That would give me the same spot. Or you could say, um, I'm going to spin around 2 pi and then I'm going to go 1 pi more. So it could be the point 7, 3 pi. Or I could say, uh, just face at 0 degrees, right? Or, or 0 radians. And then go negative 7. And hopefully you're starting to see there's an infinite number of ways to express location in pol polar coordinates. So that's both a blessing uh, and a curse for polar. Something we could take advantage of. It's also something that kind of complicates it. So let's take rectangular um, and think about how we can convert from rectangular to polar. So I have some, some point here. And that point has uh, coordinates in rectangular coordinates, which we'll say is x, y, kind of the standard for it. But we also want to talk about it in terms of some radius and some rotation. And we have done all the trig work for this because this point x, y, we know that uh, this distance right here is x. And we know that this distance right here is y. And you can just think about how those things are related to each other. So for example, um, if I were to go cosine of this angle, think back to so katoa, adjacent over radius, that would be x over r. Or if I were to say sine of it, that would be the height, right? y over r. Now, I'm, I'm one step away from being able to do some pretty easy conversions. I'm just going to multiply both sides by r for both of these equations. And notice what happens is it crosses out here, it crosses out here. And I end up with x is equal to r times cosine of theta. So if I know r and theta, I can get x from there pretty easily. Another thing I know is from this equation, uh, y is r times sine theta. So this is a good tool for me to convert from um, polar into Cartesian coordinates. One other thing, what about r? How's r related to x and y? Well, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's another piece for me. I'm going to throw one more piece up here, theta. If I think about theta, how's theta related to x, y? It's, it's through tangent, right? Tangent of the angle is y over x. So if I inverse tangent that, that means that theta must equal inverse tangent of y over x. And this one, I'm going to little asterisk it because remember inverse tangent only gives us values in the first and fourth quadrant. So if we, if we actually have x and y values over here, if x is negative, we have to compensate for that. Like we can't just use straight tangent, we're going to have to add a pi to it. But these relationships right here are key for us. This is, these are the things that I need to know to be able to convert back and forth between uh, these different formats. So for example, um, if I had the point in polar 3 pi over 6, and I want to do that in rectangular, well, I know that x is r cosine theta, and y is r sine theta. So really, I'm going to say three, the x value is 3 times the cosine of that angle, and y is 3 times sine of that angle. And let's see, cosine and sine of pi over 6. Well, maybe I know them, or maybe I look them up. Pi over 6 is right here. Cosine is x, so that's 3, root 3 over 2, and sine is height or y, that's one half. So this is three times root three over two. This is one half, three times one half. So if I multiply this out, this is gonna be, well, think of that as a three over one, right? So this one is three halves, and this one is three root three over two. Similarly, if I think about 4 and pi over 2, now that one might be kind of easy for you to visualize. 
uh, pi over 2 straight up, right? So this would be the point 0, 0.04. But if you don't, if you don't see it, um, you can still run it through these formulas. You still have 4 times cosine pi over 2, and the y part is 4 times sine of pi over 2. We know that cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this would be 4 times 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this would be 4 times 1, which is 4. How about going the other way? In other words, what if I told you I had the point 5, 5 in rectangular, or the point uh, 3, 4? Let's do 3, negative 4. Well, if we're going to go the other way, we can still think about these things in terms of these formulas. So x squared plus y squared is r squared. So 5 squared plus 5 squared equals r squared. So this is 25 plus 25. So 50 is r squared. Square root that, and we get r equals 5 root 2. So the r value is 5 root 2. And then uh, inverse tangent of 5 fifths, inverse tangent of 1, well, maybe you know it, or maybe you just see that it's pi over 4. Um, if it's not an exact value, you know, you can do it on a calculator. Uh, but this is pi over 4, and so there it is. Let's think about this point 3, negative 4. That's here, right? 3, negative 4. So r, well, Pythagorean theorem, 3 squared plus 4 squared, it's a 3, 4, 5, so r is going to be 5. And then that angle, let's see, it's going to be inverse tangent of negative 4 over 3, y over x. Um, and I should write the x value since I know it. So that's not going to show up on the unit circle for me. So how about I grab my calculator and say inverse tangent of negative 4 thirds. I'm going to make sure I'm in radians. I mean, I'm in radians. So I get about negative 0.928. Just one thing I want to point out um, here. Let's say that instead of the point 3, negative 4, it had been the point negative 3, 4. Notice how that changes our picture. That is here, negative 3, 4, right? It's actually this angle. So notice if I go inverse tangent, though, of this, it's still... Inverse tangent of negative 4 thirds still gives me that value, but that is not the angle I'm looking for. I'm looking for this angle. But this is a straight line. These are the same lines. So what I can do is add pi to that, right? A straight line. So now if I go that plus pi, that's going to give me my actual angle. When x is negative, I have to add pi to the, those inverse tangent values to get there. So now what I want to do is do a little practice with writing um, expressions back and forth. So I'm going to have some rectangular uh, equations. For example, x squared plus y squared equals 9. And I want to write its polar equivalent. Here's, here's what I mean by this. Um, I'm going to pull up Desmos. And if I go x squared uh, plus y squared equals 9, you get the circle, radius of 3, center at 0. Um, if you look at my options, if you look at my setup options here, I can um, change from rectangular to polar coordinates. And if I try to graph something in polar coordinates, I want to get that same shape. Like if I, if I write x squared plus y squared equals 9, I'm still in... in um, I'm still in rectangular coordinates, but I want to rewrite it in something in terms of r and theta that will work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for these things to do some substitution. Now, I notice I have an x squared plus y squared here. Well, that's just r squared. So this polar, this means that I could rewrite this as r squared equals 9. So I could just say r equals 3, which makes sense. The radius is always 3. In other words, if I say r equals 3, it's the same graph. It's going to show it to me. So let's go ahead and do another one that's like this.
uh, y equals 3x plus 2. So we want to write this thing that's in rectangular in polar coordinates. So we don't want any x's or y's. We want it just in terms of r's and thetas. And we want it solved for r. We want to get r all alone. So this is kind of straightforward. I know what y is. y is r times sine theta. So r times sine theta equals 3. x is r times cosine theta. 2. All right, that feels pretty good. X's and Y's are gone. I have R's and thetas. But what I want to do now is solve for R. I want to get R all alone. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. I have an R here and an R here. I'm going to get all the R's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract uh, 3R cosine theta from both sides. And the reason why I did that, this is technique. I want you to, to know this. I have an R in both these places. I can factor an R out. Right? Think distributive property in reverse. And now I have r times this equals 2. What I can do now is I can divide both sides by this whole thing. I'm, so I'm going to divide everything by this. And when I do that, on the left-hand side, it goes away. So now it's solved for r. And then I end up with 2 over sine theta minus 3 cosine theta. And this line, which is so easy to draw in rectangular coordinates, is pretty complicated to draw in polar coordinates. Polar coordinates are really good with curves. Um, rectangular coordinates are really good with things that are straight or very close to straight. All right, let's do something similar. This is in rectangular. We want it in polar. So we want x's and y's gone when everything in terms of r and theta, and we want it solved for r. So I'm looking at pieces here. Well, x squared plus y squared, that's r squared. So let's, let's replace that. 6 is 6. y is r times sine theta. Cool. Uh, I want it solved for r. I've got r on both sides. In this case, I can just divide both sides by r. This is all multiplied together over here. So if I do that, r squared divided by r is r, leaving me 6. r divided by r is 1 times sine theta. I've got y squared equals 4 minus x squared. Um, I could start to substitute in like r squared theta here, r cosine theta here, square everything, and go from that. Um, that's an okay way to do it. You would eventually get there. But I'm going to notice that I can add x squared to both sides. So this gives me x squared plus y squared equals 4. x squared plus y squared is r squared. Squared equals 4. So r equals 2. Yeah, we got there. Uh, I'm going to go the other route just, just to show what would happen if I did. Um, and it's okay. Uh, y squared is r sine theta squared. So r sine theta squared equals 4 minus, well, x is r cosine theta squared. Um, r sine theta squared is r squared times sine squared theta, 4 minus, this would be r squared times cosine squared theta. And I want to solve for r. So let me get this on the other side. I'm going to add this to both sides to move it over. So I've got r squared sine squared plus r squared cosine squared equals 4. I can factor an r squared out of here. Do you see it? Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And we get the same answer. Square both sides. R equals 2. A little bit more work to go that route, but we got there. Okay, what about going the opposite direction? What about going from polar to rectangular? So let's see. Here's some polar equations for us. R equals 2 cosecant theta. Now, going the other way, we want to get rid of all the r's and all the thetas, all the trig, and just have some x's and y's. So what is, I don't have to have a cosine or sine here. Cosecant, but cosecant is, is 1 over um, sine. So this is the same as 2 over sine theta. I'm looking for r sine thetas. I'm looking for r cosine thetas. I'm looking for r squareds. How about I multiply both sides by sine? Right, it cancels that out over here. I get r sine theta equals 2. And I know that r sine theta is just y. 
So just that straight line, r equals 2, and polar would have to be written this way. Let's do a couple more. All right, uh, I got this fraction. I don't like it. I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator to get rid of it. So if I multiply both sides by that, um, on the left-hand side, I get r times that equals 4. Let's distribute that 3 into there. 2r minus 3r cosine theta equals 4. Well, I've got this r cosine theta. This right here is an x. Right? That's just an x. So let's take care of that right now. So I've got 2r minus 3x equals 4. Just got just this solo r, but I really want it to be an r squared. Uh, how about this? I'm going to solve for r. I'm going to get r all alone. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Now I've got this. Now since I want this to be an r squared, I'm just going to square both sides. And now this r squared is x squared plus y squared. And I'm okay leaving it in this form. We don't need to get it into another form than that. You don't need to multiply that out and deal with it. All right, I've got r equals 2 sine theta. So I, the sine theta on its own doesn't do me any good. I need it. I want an r with it to turn it into a y. And this r... I want that to be an r squared. Now, in the last problem, I squared both sides. But if I just square both sides here, that doesn't help me with this. So how about I multiply both sides by r? Notice how that'll give me an r squared over here, and that'll give me an r sine theta here. So now I have 2 r sine theta is y. r times r is r squared, which is x squared plus y squared. And now it's in rectangular. Right? There's no r's and no thetas. Good to go. Last one, uh, r equals 5. Well, I want r squared. I'm going to square both sides. So r squared must equal 25. And since r squared is x squared plus y squared, x squared plus y squared equals 25. And I'm back to that circle right? with a radius of 5. Radius of 5, any angle you want, or x squared plus y squared equals 25. All right. Hey, take your time with this. Know these. These are important for you to have um, to be able to do this. And if you have any questions as you are working through things, you can message me or you can post them in the forum.